all about ABA. I'm a BCBA. And I'm a BCABA. And today we are going to talk about our first day as RBT. Oh man, those were the days. It's story time. So my first day as an RBT, I had just graduated from undergrad and it was like, I had started working at this company that summer. So like June and I graduated in May. So when I tell you that like I had some shadowing experience in ABA, but like I didn't know really what to, what it was like to like work with a client one on one. Like I didn't know that, especially because like I did a little bit of shadowing hours, but like I didn't know the in depth processes, you know, like I didn't know like even how to like read a behavior plan. Um, so I started at this company and like day one, I come in and it's like, boom, this is your client. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? And that was it. That was it. There, there wasn't a BCBA at that clinic. Not on my first day. Not for some time after. And Yikes. I didn't know what to do. My story is pretty similar. I mean, I had just graduated out of, um, out of my undergrad as well. And I majored in psychology so I was like I need to explore like the different facets and I had briefly heard about ABA in one of my developmental psych classes but like it really just like didn't really stick until like I started and I was like oh yeah I think I learned about this yeah but yeah I basically started day one didn't even really remember what ABA stood for um and I was also like kind of thrown in a little bit they're like all right here's your client and you should pair and I was like Hair, and I had no idea what that meant, and so they left, and I was just with this client, um, and I was just like, okay, like I'm okay with them, but like, what, like, what do I do? Had no idea. But what is pairing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> At least they told you to pair. I didn't even get that. I didn't even get like a. This is what you should do. It was literally like, this is your client, and then I had to ask like. What am I supposed to do? And they're like, well, you're in this room. And I was sharing the room with like two other therapists and like their clients. And they're like, this is his binder. And I was like, okay. And I was like, what do I do? Like, and I'm like, okay, I open it and there's like stuff in there. And they're like, yeah, like just put these pluses or minuses if he does these things. But the, the like the program wasn't very detailed either. Like it's not like it didn't have like specific like SD response. Like it was just like, like I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea either. Um, my client didn't have a behavior plan. I he actually didn't have one for like six months, but that's another story for another day. But I um, didn't know. Like he didn't have any targets either. So like he was also new to the clinic that I was working at, and like we were both new. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. And I felt so overwhelmed. And I was so like scared and I was also like worried that like my coworkers were gonna judge me. Oh yes. And that like they were just like, wow, this new girl just like doesn't know what the heck she's doing. And let's and not sit here and act like people haven't judged other people yeah, before. I mean, it happens like, every day. It happens. Oh yeah. And yeah, I don't know, I just was really terrified and it just that feeling didn't really leave for a really long time. This is where it took a turn for me, right? So I, I read the binder, right? And I'm like trying to talk to the client and like hang out with them. And I guess in my mind, do what I thought was pairing, although I didn't even know what the word was at the time. Um, so I'm like, all right, this is it, buddy. It's you and me, <laughs> like, let's do this. So we moved through like a schedule because I was working in a clinic, that was my first day. And there was like a schedule that everybody like moved through, but they had like a system where like, one group of kids moved through one schedule and then the other group moved through another so that like there wouldn't be too much like overlapping because the rooms weren't very big um and it was circle time for me it was circle time for me when i tell you that i had to excuse myself um after trying to get my client to sit and not knowing what that would mean not understanding that like me placing this simple demand of sit down could be so bad and it can evoke so many behaviors. Um, it went terrible. 
And then the other RBTs, they didn't have a lot of patience with me. I feel like they also like they were going through their own things before I even came into the clinic, you know, with like not having a BCBA and things like that. And they were just annoyed and I, I could feel it. And like, I mean, thinking back on it now, like I don't blame them because it's just like they're already struggling. And then now you're bringing in somebody who's so inexperienced and now you have to help them too. But the point is they were helpful. They, they you know, they were like, hey, like do this, do that. They were giving me instruction. And I followed it and then I felt this like wave of emotion, right? And I was like, mm, we are not about to sit here and cry for these people. And I was like, can I go to the bathroom? Went to the bathroom and I cried. On your first I day? I totally cried on my first day oh my in God, the bathroom. Really cool. And then I was like, all right, you know, <laughs> part of that thug life, get it together. Pull it together. And I was like, all right, wiped my tears. And I was like, let's get back out there. And I, and I live to tell another Aww. story another day. But yeah, that first day was rough. I mean, that wasn't even one of many. Like this lunchtime was a mess. Like, I, I didn't yeah, know. I have, I have like flashbacks, like PTSD from yeah. my first few weeks too. Yeah, I mean, circle time, see, like, we have very similar experiences, even though, we're, like, our first days were at different places, but circle time, man, I didn't, didn't anticipate, um, what was gonna happen either when I was trying to get my client to sit with everyone else, and the pain that I felt when I'm sitting here trying to literally wrangle him while everyone's waiting for, for us to start, so they're not, st they're not starting, they're just watching us, and, um, I'm just struggling, like insanely struggling with this client, like flailing around, running around, like screaming, crying, like, and I want to cry with him, like it just, and then like, I, you know, like they, they had clients too, so it's not like they could just like drop what they're doing to like help, or like drop their clients so they come help me, but they're like trying to help. But I, I also like wasn't really sure, like, like they were telling me what to do and I like didn't know even lingo, like. We're like blocking, I'm like blocking, like what do you mean? Like blocking, and then they're like, no, do that. Like literally, they had to literally spell it out for me. And um, I also wanted to cry, um, but I, I didn't um, that day. I definitely cried shortly after I cried that night. Um, it made me question, you know, pretty much everything. I was like, is this for me? Like, mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I was just like one of those moments where I was like, maybe this is not right. Mm, speak on it. Listen, when I got to my car that day, so the place I was working, it was like an eight to like three kind of schedule. When I got to my car at 3.05, I just had to sit. This was me holding the steering wheel. I was just sitting and I was like, what did I just do? I'm like, what did I get myself into? Cause it's like, when I shadowed, it's a different experience, you know? And I feel like also the place I shadowed, they didn't have many aggressive kids versus like the my first day starting as our RBT had a lot of aggressive kids. So I'm like, what did I do? And then my drive home was like an hour. So here I am driving home in silence, radio is off. Always. And I'm just like, just driving. And I get home. My mom was like, how was your day? And I was like, I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it. But I went back for a day two and a day three and then a year one and a year two, not at the same place, just putting that out there. Um, but, you know, many years later, here I am, still in ADA and I'm glad I continued. So some encouraging words for those of you that might be like struggling the way we were on our first day or if it's your first week or your first month or first year um, is that it does get better. Like the more knowledge you gain, the easier it becomes. Yeah, like I think one of the biggest things that would have helped me is knowing that like, well one, what pairing is, like being explained like, okay, you're gonna pair to build instructional control to then be able to like implement a behavior plan and this is why we're doing it. Like I, we just not getting, like not being given any information is not a great way to start and it can make you feel like this is not right for me. And it's like maybe it is right, but you just don't know because you weren't told. So that's kind of like, I guess what we want to like help people, you know, know is that like 
you know, it's, it does get better. It does. And if you're a BCBA out there, and like maybe it's like your first year, you have your your first cases and your first few RBTs, and you have a new RBT starting on a case, and even if it's like an old RBT, like just make sure you're providing like that instruction and that support that's really really needed within those like initial sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and there's RBTs that have been in the field for a while, and like they don't know that they are supposed to pair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or haven't seen a behavior plan. I, I've come across RBTs that have been doing it for like six months, let's say, and they're like, yeah, I've never seen one. Um, so it's important that like you really push that knowledge and like you're like, hey, this is what we have to do. This is the game plan. You know, we're part of a team and you should feel supported. So if you're yes. feeling unsupported as an RBT or even as a BCBA, because that's a whole or other CABA. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. Um, yeah. But make sure you ask for help and yes. talk to someone. Yeah. Like ask for, just always ask questions. I think for me, I was so scared to ask questions because I felt like I was already being judged. I wouldn't be, I didn't want to be like annoying and act mm -hmm. be like people think that I'm dumb or something, but no, like ask as a BCABA and I don't know you as a BCBA, like you would rather people ask a million questions yep. and to feel like, okay. And to feel co more confident and like, and to be able to understand because as a supervisor, we don't just want to like tell people what to do. We want them to understand why we're doing it also. So that is also really important. So always ask questions. And then after I like started asking questions, I never stopped to this day. I asked like 50,000 questions a day. And you know what? I don't, I don't care. Yeah. And it's good. It helps you. And people, when someone asks you a question, whether you're just a coworker, whether you're an owner, whether you're a BCBA, BCABA, another RBT, Whatever it may be that you are, a lead tech, anything like that, drop the shade. Don't be judgy. For real. And we all had a first day at one point, okay? And nobody's first day is going to be perfect. And nobody's going to come in knowing everything. And, like, every company's different, too. So, yeah. you know, just be a little compassionate. You know? Exactly. Compassionate. Be compassionate. And I think that's the key right there. Like, every company is different. Um... And I feel like that really affects things because even if you come in as an RBT who's like well seasoned, you're like, I'm a veteran, I know what I'm doing. Um, you might not know like the company politics yeah. or like the company structure and like that still gets weird. You know, it's like, I don't know. I think if we just have a little bit more compassion towards each other, oh, patience, <sighs> yes. Like the patience we have with our clients, you know, when we're trying to teach them things and we have that with each other, I think people would be less afraid to ask questions. Yeah. And we could all just be a little more vulnerable and just be like, you know what? Like, honestly, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Because I was afraid to say that too my first yeah. day. Like, I was just kind of like, I would ask like questions like around that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, so what should I do with this? Or what should I do now? But instead of just being like, listen, I have no idea what I'm doing at all. I'm like, For I sure. need you to hold my hand right now because I really don't know. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and then one more thing that I think I've, I'm still trying to work on now is always asking for a break when I really need one. So like if you're feeling really overwhelmed in the moment, you're not going to be able to give your client the best ser like services that you're capable of anyway. So always ask for help or for a break if you need it to so just step away, gather yourself, you know, like refresh, take a moment and come back in, you know. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to ask for help or to ask for a break. Like, oh. it's, it's actually very healthy. And very. I, I respect people who ask, yes. ask me, you know, like, can you, like, can you take over for a second? Or, you know, that self-awareness is key. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's times where we work together on, like, a case or something. And I'd be like, I need you to tap me out. Tap tap me out because I, I need a second for myself, you know, especially if like you're on really aggressive cases, like yeah. that's hard for anyone. And when you think mm -hmm. about it, like it kind of goes against your own like natural, like, um, instinct. Oh yeah. You know, because it's kind of like somebody's coming towards you and you're kind <laughs> you're of like, flight, okay, I need to respond flight. according to the behavior plan to yeah. what it says, like whether it's saying something or redirecting them somewhere or whatever it may be. But it's like, Technically, like your natural instinct is to like, I'm gonna get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, so please ask for breaks and take breaks throughout. And if you just need to cry it out, cry it out. And cry it out. We've all done it. I don't think I've met someone that works in the field that hasn't cried. I mean, you say you have it, you're lying. 
I mean, if you have it, please comment down below because I want to know <laughs> if you haven't cried. Like, I feel like I've cried, whether it be like happy tears or sad tears, yeah. I've definitely cried um, multiple times. So, but yes. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed our story time today. And if you liked it, then please hit a like on this video and comment down below your orange story because we want to know. We do. And as always, stay on your best or worst behavior.